Hello, my lovely anatomists and physiologists, Michelle Glass here, and we are ready to talk about our third and final formed element, the platelets. Now, sometimes the platelets are referred to as thrombocytes. And so that might help you in your reading. And also as we look at some of the chemicals that are involved here, we get um, that kind of naming system showing up. Now the job of the platelet we'll see is going to be to help repair damaged blood vessels. And we'll see them playing an important role in our blood clotting process called hemostasis. And so let's say this is called blood, um, stop blood loss. Now notice this word sounds very similar to our word hemo, um, homeostasis. And so remember the hemo part of the word here means blood and stasis is the same ending. It means like standing in place. So this means like literally stopping out of the blood loss. We're gonna have a little conversation in this video about hemostasis and then we'll continue that discussion into our next video. When we talk about platelets, we'll see that they are um, cell fragments derived from the megakaryocyte. And we'll see that the fragment is full of actin and myosin and some enzymes. And so because it's just a cell fragment and not a full on cell, it's only going to be in circulation for about 10 days. These fragments are about two to four micrometers in diameter. And we'll see in addition to their role in hemostasis, that they're also going to release growth factors that are gonna be important in healing and repairing tissues that have been damaged. So let's take a look at this process of hemostasis. Well, let me go back actually and remind you when we talked about hemostasis, Poesis, and we said that, of course, the platelet is derived from the megakaryocyte, but the megakaryocyte is derived from the myeloid stem cell. We already mentioned that hormone thrombopoietin, which is being produced by the liver and kidneys, that's going to trigger the production of platelets. So now we see that naming thrombocyte showing up here in our reference. So let's spend a little bit of time talking about our plate, our process of hemostasis. We're gonna see that there are three key phases. So let's talk first about the vascular phase and then the platelet phase and the coagulation phase is fairly complicated. So we'll mention it here and then we'll do video uh, just on coagulation phase. The vascular phase is occurring in the first like 30 minutes. So it is very much our immediate emergency response. And we see two major things happening. The first major thing that happens is the blood vessel that's cut or damaged will actually have a spasm. And this spasm is where the smooth muscle is contracting so dramatically that if the vessel is small enough, like the vessel basically just kind of shuts right there so that you don't have very much blood loss happening. There are two shapes of smooth muscle that make up the blood vessel. So we get circular muscle fibers. So the circular muscle fibers, when they contract, they're going to constrict the blood flow. And then you're going to have a set of longitudinal muscle fibers. 
And with these, you're going to see them kind of like when they contract, contract, they kind of like pull those broken pieces of the blood vessel kind of like deeper into the tissue. So we can say draw um, vessel deep into tissue. The other major event that happens during the vascular phase is that our endothelial cells, the endothelial cells are those cells that line the entire cardiovascular system. So they're a special type of squamous epithelial cells, simple squamous epithelial cells, and they're lining your, all your vessels, the inside of all of your vessels and the inside of your heart. And so when you get the damage to the blood vessel, you get an exposure to the basement membrane, which is your connective tissue layer. And so this is going to cause the endothelial cells. So let's put that in parentheses. And then what happens actually with endothelial cells is that these cells become sticky. And then also these cells release endothelians. And let's highlight this chemical endothelians. And then let's draw an arrow that the endothelian kind of triggers, perpetuates, continues that vascular spasm. And then this leads us to the platelet phase. So I don't think we should think that the vascular phase is, um, is occurring to completion before platelet phase starts. I think we should see the vascular phase as that immediate phase and it's lasting the first like 30 minutes of damage. And pretty soon into the vascular phase, we start getting into the platelet phase. And what we see here, and actually let's, let's pop back up to our discussion of platelets because we need to add in here that our, our platelets have these two important characteristics. They can aggregate, which means group together, and then they can adhere, which basically this is talking about, they can form this nice clump. Now, normally we see the platelets just moving through the blood vessels, no issues. But when we have our vascular phase and we have our exposed basement membrane, and we have the stickiness to our endothelial cells, then as those platelets start moving through and come into this area, we start to see that the platelets are going to form, let's just go ahead and say a platelet plug. And so basically what this is saying is that as those platelets are moving through this blood vessel, they get to this sticky area, right? This broken damaged area. And the response is for these platelets to change and they become sticky. So they kind of start becoming like spiky in their appearance. And this causes them to kind of start grabbing hold of each other and then grabbing hold of this exposed basement membrane. And so now you have all these platelets filling in that hole. So we've had the vascular phase, which is reducing the diameter of the blood vessel. And then whatever space is left becomes plugged up with those platelets. Okay, and so this is going to be the important feature that's happening. This is like a temporary seal. And then the platelets begin to release a whole lot of chemicals. Okay, and so they're going to release stuff like um, ADP. This is adenosine diphosphate. And this is going to increase the aggregation. So this is like a few platelets come into this area and begin to stick. And then they release this ADP, which brings more platelets to this area that continue to stick, right? So it is a very much a positive feedback 
loop where the more platelets you have there sticking, the more platelets you end up having there sticking. We get the release of serotonin, which is gonna increase your vascular spasm, or um, let's just say, let's rephrase that and say maintain, let's use the word vasoconstriction, which is talking about constricting the blood vessel. So no longer like a spasm, like this immediate response, but just keep that, keep that contraction kind of happening. We're gonna get the release of prostaglandins. We, we mentioned these as recruiting white blood cells to the area, right? This is one of those chemicals that your white blood cells move in, um, move toward. And then we also see this helps to also maintain the vasoconstriction. We get calcium ion being released which we're gonna see is involved in the coagulation phase, which is coming up next. We also see clotting factors um, being released, which are also involved in that coagulation phase. And then we can also add to this list um, what's called platelet-derived growth factor and this is going to increase mitosis so we have obviously damaged vessel we need to increase mitosis in order to repair regrow that particular area so when we have damage to blood vessel the very immediate first thing that happens is the vascular spasm and that's going to be important in restricting the blood flow, the actual blood that's lost. It's drawing that vessel deeper into the tissue. And then with the exposure of that basement membrane, we see those endothelial cells, which are those cells that line the vessel, releasing endothelians to kind of maintain that vascular spasm there immediately. And we see these cells become sticky. So that leads us directly into the platelet phase, where as those platelets begin to pass through this particular area, they become sticky and they begin sticking to each other and sticking to the vessel, forming the platelet plug. And we see a positive feedback mechanism where the more platelets you have, those platelets release factors that bring more platelets to the area and just perpetuate this whole process. Keep it going, keep it going. And so we have several of these mentioned here. That takes us to the coagulation phase, which is a whole series of steps. So we're gonna do a whole video to this particular topic. But what we can say here is that this is going to, um, let's just say end in what's called the blood clot. So we don't get the blood clot until we're at the very end of the coagulation phase. So stay tuned for some details on that. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other.